my name is CJ, KI4KON. My call sign, I'm a general class amateur radio operator or a ham as we are called. Been a ham ever since 2005. Got into the hobby because all my family has been in it. So I wanted to go ahead and get in it. I've been finding it's been a lot of fun. A lot of people I've been talking to all over the world. Today, you're probably tuning in because you were wondering about what it takes to become a ham radio operator. Well, it's very easy. Since FCC has done away with the Morse code requirement, you can get into it with a simple 50 question multiple test taken at your local radio club uh, throughout the United States and Canada, actually all over the world, there's all kinds of clubs. My suggestion is go down on the web to ARRL.net, <coughs> excuse me, type in on the web page there, you can select clubs then select the state that you are residing in and hook up with one of them there. They come with phone numbers, their air addresses, um, websites they have them. Refer to that. Go on down there on one of the meeting nights. Introduce yourself. Talk to some of the fine folk down there and uh, let them answer some of your questions that you may have. As far as we are here for today, I'm just going to tell you generally the basics of obtaining your technician class license. My suggestion is go to a local library, bookstore, um, including ARRL.net, which also has a bookstore that they sell the different study manuals that you will need to obtain to advance through to your amateur extra level. It does not necessarily mean you have to go all the way up. You can stay a technician if you want. You can go to general and stay. You can go all the way up to amateur extra. The only difference is more theory, more learning, more bandwidth to play with. Now, the book that I recommend, the book that I actually studied with, is now you're talking. All you need is your for your first radio license. This book can be picked up anywhere, like I said previous. Retails for approximately $19.95, $21 in that area. They can order it for you at the bookstores. You'll get it. Start studying it. Um, once you are starting to study this, take it at your own pace. Don't overload yourself. Take small bits of it. There are, in this book, it comes with a study guide simple questions to test yourself, test your knowledge, see where you are weakest in and where are your strongest points. The other suggestion I have is when you do obtain this book or any other book to obtain your technician class licenses, refer to your website. Go online to either QIZ, one of the other sites, they do have practice tests, what they call. Same tests, that you will find on the web is you will find in the testing as far as question pools for each of the three levels. Once you have started to do that, you start to study and you're, you're always obtaining 80 to 84 plus percent on the tests, on the practice tests on the web, then take the next step. Go down to the local club ask them about their test night, go ahead and challenge a test. Some clubs do charge a small fee, some clubs don't. The other thing is, once you obtain that, you need to go down that night with pencils, get a couple of pencils, a calculator, your driver's license. The VECs will take that, they'll give you a paper that you'll have to fill out with your name, address, all the information you need, the test you are taking, etc. They will then hand you a test package will consist of a piece of paper and the 50 question multiple test. You will be sectioned off into your own little areas, take the test, take your time at the test, 
read each question once or twice, thinking it through. Okay, for it. Go on, take the test. Like I say, take it time to your time. It's not timed. Take your time with it, you'll do fine. Once you have done that, about four to six weeks you'll be issued a ID call sign, like mine is KI4 KO1. You'll be issued that depending on the geographical location you reside in. Once you have sent all that material material in and the VEC has, check the FCC database on the FCC website. Once you issue a call and the call is actually in that database, you can then start using the equipment. There's nothing to stop you from buying purchasing equipment prior to your test. The only one thing is you need to explain to the people that you're buying the equipment from that you are currently studying for your technician class, you should be fine. The reason being is there are steep fines for using this equipment without proper licensing. When I first started out, I went down and bought this Yezu FT60R. It's a dual bander, two meter, full 40 rig. Very good, very ease of operation. This is what I use for about eight months. This is what I suggest you go down and get. And the reason why is because of multitasking. Okay? Think of buying equipment that multi multitasks. Basically, handheld as you know, take it inside, use it. Take it in the car, use it. Take it outside, walk around with it, use it. Um, not tied you down to an automobile or a base. Those you can only use at those areas, with the exception of a mobile unit, such as like this icon. You'll get the microphone, you get the radio, power cord, etc. This is the next radio that I purchased, along with a Yaesu FT7800. This icon, IC2100, is strictly a 2 meter megahertz. I can only use this for one thing. That's talking strictly two meters worth. The Yezu FT7800 is what they call, just like my handheld, a dual band. Um, don't worry about dual band right now. Pick up a nice inexpensive radio that you're comfortable with. Does not mean anything fancy. Um, one thing with the mobile, if you use it for the base, you will have to have a power supply. Nothing less than 25 amps. Local ham fest, as they're called, basically ham fest like big yard sales, like you see probably your parents go to. The other thing with this handy talkie compared to a mobile is you don't need an antenna, you don't need a power supply, come with a battery, put it in the charge, you go to town. I would suggest so if you pick one of these up, uh, this one here goes for about $125, pick up an extra battery. It's good for field day. Field day is a big group of people coming together to do whatever talking all over the place. With the mobile, on the mobile rigs, you also had to pick up. Went down to the local amateur radio outlet store, picked up a very inexpensive cheap dipole, um, or J-pole for that matter. I actually started out with the J-pole first and then went to the dipole. J-pole cost me 40 bucks, six dollars for a TV antenna mask, pulls it outside, a little bit of cut wax, boom, you're on the air. We're all here to help each other. I Elmer a lot of people, ham term for tutoring, so to speak. I have no problem answering any of your questions. Feel free to email any questions to me at ki4kon at arrl.net. We're in the house, be more than happy to answer any questions you want. If I do not know the answer to any of the questions that you have for me, I will find out the proper answer and email them back to you. Just give me a couple of days to do that. But like I said, start with your technician class, build up from there, get into the local hobby, enjoy it, promptly back to you. So until then, thank you for tuning in. I'm CJ, KI4KON. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you soon. So until then, God bless, 73 to you and your family, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Good night.